You drink your coffee while I sip my tea and we sitting here playing so cool, thinking what will be will be. Hello everyone, and this week's tutorial is on Will You by Hazel O'Connor. This is a really great song with an incredible saxophone solo by Wesley McGuigan. It was released in 1981, and it only got to number 8 in the charts. It did spend 10 weeks there, though. Um, so let's get straight into the theory of it. As I understand, this song's in D minor, and it's mainly diatonic, which means most of the notes used are in the key of D minor. Although there are some sharps added to make some major chords, which means that it's not completely diatonic. It's at 112 beats per minute, which is raised slightly above the human heartbeat, um, and I'll explain why that's such a good thing she's done later. Um, Performance-wise, I like to use an arpeggiated guitar pick pattern. I think it works really nicely, and it's really simple and effective, and it also means that the vocals are the main focus of the song. There are lots of chords, and there's not necessarily a chord progression that I can see, but how I like to think of it is in three sections. So the first section I like to think of goes A minor to C to F to G and you do this twice but the second time instead of going to G you go to an E and that's the first section I like that's the first two lines of the song the second section I like to think of is um, C to G to A minor to E which is a but it's getting kind of late now I wonder if you'll stay now, stay now, stay now, stay now. And then the next section is obviously all, Will you just politely say goodnight? So, um, A minor to C to D to A minor to E. And that's all three sections. Um, that's, I, there's obviously the solo that you can play the guitar underneath, which goes A minor to E to A minor, with a C in the middle and a D in the middle, back to the A minor to E to A minor. And I realise this is quite a lot to remember and take in, so I'll leave all the chords down in the description for you. Singing wise, I quite like to leave the beginning quite quiet and understated. I think that works really well. Um, and you, although Hazel O'Connor doesn't necessarily, I think it works really, really nicely if you sing through the lines and hold those notes. Um, I would also, the peak of the song, I see, is at the Take up your eyes, pale soul, can me to you and make me whole. So get really loud there. Um, and if in doubt, just use really, really dramatic dynamics. It's a song where you can get away with doing that. Um, yeah, so let's move on to the songwriting aspect of it. Um, as I said, it's at 112 beats per minute, which is slightly above the human heart rate. And this is so clever because Hazel O'Connor is trying to create an atmosphere of excitement and anticipation with the words she's using. And so by making the heart slightly faster, it makes you feel slightly more excited because you're listening to this beat, um, which is so clever. The sharp she adds, adds makes it seem really really happy at the end of the lines and it creates this kind of feeling of hope in the song and it also stands out from the minor key it makes those chords really prominent um there's a repeated idea in the lyrics which is it's getting kind of late now and it kind of means that there's no resolution in the song it's kind of always back to the same feelings the same idea um yeah and that's why i think that's what i think makes a song it's just the songwriting behind it is genius um, industry hint time everyone, um, <laughs> if you're a musician or a performer be so careful of your fingers, like wearing rings or doing DIY, the saxophonist in this song, Wesley McGugan, had a terrible accident where he cut his fingers off with a circular saw and he hasn't been able to play and that was the end of it for him, um, he's living a very happy life now and he's helping out his son with his art, um, but be so careful. Um, Business-wise, as I said, it only reached number eight, but it was used in the film Broken Glass, and film music's a great thing. Um, using your music in it, it's vital to the film, like it can be used in the credits, in the background, the characters could even sing the song, 
And so there's a huge potential revenue for your music in film, but there's also quite a lot of competition. Um, so it's for you to decide really whether you think that the pros are worth it. Um, when performing it, I like to keep it really simple, as I've mentioned. Um, the original song, I think, is quite raw, and I think that the vocals are the main idea in the song. And so I like to put the voice up really high to make it stand out a lot, and I also like to put a lot of reverb on it, which makes her voice sound really good, which is what you want if it's going to be in the forefront of the song. Um, with the guitar, I like to take off the bass so that the whole song sounds quite airy and up high. I think it works really nice because I don't feel like you need a lot of bass in this song. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. This is a really great song to play in a quiet set, in an opening set, in a cafe. It creates a really, really nice atmosphere and I hope you have lots of fun playing it. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.